Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, kill them greetings and grace and peace to each and every one of you. With love from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Prophecy Him McLean here. Amen. Whereby I preach an unadulterated and fireable word of God, legislating God's kingdom right here on earth. I'm on here every Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Nevertheless, today I decided to come on a little bit earlier because I do have to support someone else's program. I do apologize also that I did not um, give a notification sooner because I do like to operate in the spirit of excellence. Nevertheless, um, uh, there are sometimes uh, things... Things may just occur, so you may have to make some uh, adjustments, okay? So tonight, I, I'm going to try to execute this message as expeditiously and efficiently as possible. I will not be on with you for too long, but I do want to talk to you tonight about the spirit of pride. Also, I want to talk to you about something that that God has been dealing with me um, as it relates to guarding your heart, to guarding your heart. So I want to uh, kind of just talk about that first, guarding your heart, and then I'm going to go right into the topic about um, the spirit of pride. So I promise you this message tonight is going to be very informative, and I'm sure many of you uh, will also be able to relate to what i'm saying tonight i promise you you're going to be able to relate so if you can for me just go ahead and like and share i do have to give my audience time to build because they did not know i was going to come on this time once again for those of you who are joining in uh, i do apologize for the spontaneous broadcasting but um i had to do this because i do someone else i have to support this evening uh, and i've been kind of busy all day so i did not get around to making a notification i do like to operate in the spirit of excellence nevertheless i'm on here every thursday is at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, tonight I'm going to be talking about the spirit of pride and also how to guard your heart. And this message is going to be very informative. Okay, so once again, I will not be on here for too long. I'm taking about maybe the next, excuse me, next 60 seconds just to um, invite some friends on here and then I'll go right into it. If you can for me, so very kindly, just do the same for me. Amen. I promise you I'm not going to be on here long because I've been ministering all um, for the past few months and all week long so i'm a little bit tired and depleted but again i am consistent right i'm consistent and i like to give my word i'm not flaky at all so i want to be able to give you my word and um come on here because i know that there are some people um that look forward to the broadcasting so I don't want to deprive you. Amen. I don't want to deprive you. Although uh, it's a sacrifice to me. I've, I should have taken the day off. But I wanted to be consistent um, in keeping my word. Okay. So let me just go ahead and uh, just share, share with a few more people that I'm going to stop. All right. Okay. Uh, just give me about one more second and I am done. All right, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let me just go ahead and nod a few of you on here. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Amen, I see none other than Pearl Doss all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. Amen, God bless you. I do see uh, Debbie's in the house. God bless you, I love you. Thank you so much for all the love and the support. I see Cecilia, Dominique on here, amen. God bless you. I also see Bishop Sean Lewis from Virginia, Altia Young Marie, Amy McCall all the way from Jamaica, Lawana Jer Jerkins, God bless you. Ghana is in the house. I see Angela. Amen. Lord Gal Bates. God bless you, Apostle. How are you? Great to have you in the broadcasting room of God. Chrissy Lynn Jersey's in the house. I also see Camaria. God bless you, woman of God. I am hope I'm saying your name right. I love your spirit. I love your humility, woman of God. And I bless God for you. Listen, tonight I want to talk to you real briefly. And I want to talk to you about guarding your heart. Guarding your heart as well as... Um, the spirit of pride. I promise you this message is going to be very, very informative. Amen. And I may even make this a part two because I'm not going to be on here for long. But today the Lord has been dealing with me because I've been speaking to God about something. And um, the Lord has been dealing with me about the guarding your heart. Guarding your heart. God bless you. God bless your apostle blessings. Guarding your heart. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I am a woman that I have a very large, huge heart. You know, I have a very, very big heart. I'm a person that has a very big heart. I don't know if any of you can relate. I have a very big heart. And people who have big hearts tend to get hurt very quickly. We get hurt very easily. Why? Because it is difficult for us to guard our heart 
because we don't necessarily know how to do it because every time you are giving of yourself and somebody crosses you over you know you're always pouring out yourself to people always supporting people whether that's financially um, supporting people's Facebook live being a good person you're loving on people you're always giving of your time you're always making sacrifices but yet none of that is reciprocated none of that is reciprocated <clears throat> and you have a big heart you know and you don't know how to you don't know how sometimes to turn that switch off. I'm one of those people that, <coughs> that don't know how to turn that switch off. I don't know when to say no. I don't know when to say, you know what, that's it, enough. I'm done, I'm done giving of myself to people that are ungrateful. I'm done giving of myself to people who are non-appreciative. I'm done giving of myself for people, amen, who it's only going to use me and deplete me and then afterwards they discard you. See, I'm one of those individuals that I will constantly do and do and do and do and do until there's a switch that goes off. You know, I'm one of those individuals that I will constantly give to you and then until the reality hits, the switch goes off and then I no longer do it. But it is hard for people like ourselves to know when to turn that switch off because guess what? You are pure. When you are pure and you have a good heart and you're loving and you're kind and you're giving and you just don't know when to tell, tell people um, no, you don't know uh, to say stop, you know. So what happens is that people who have big hearts, we attract all the wrong people. We attract people that are broken. We attract Jezebels. We attract narcissistic people. Here, let me give you some examples. We attract narcissistic people, users. So, and as I said, the Lord has been speaking me, speaking to me today. He said, stop casting your pearls amongst swines. And it's gotten to the point where the Lord had, had to even use other prophets to say to me, stop letting people use you. Stop being so overly welcome. Stop being so overly um, accommodating. And stop being so overly available. And because I just don't know when to stop, I keep doing it. Until the point where sometimes God has to say, all right, since you don't know how to do it, I'm gonna move some folk out of your life. And sometimes that's what, what it requires. Because you are pure in heart and you don't know when to turn that switch off, sometimes you're gonna say, Lord, I need you to remove these people out of my heart. Because your big heart, they attract leeches. Your heart attract leeches. It attracts palmer worm, caterpillars, um, uh, uh, uh. It, it, a palmer worm, caterpillars, it attracts le it leeches, it attracts um, snakes, it attracts uh, rats, it attracts bloodsuckers, capitalists, users, huh? sabotage, people who want to sabotage you. It attracts all these people, rats, snakes, users, capitalists, people who want to be your time wasters, huh? heartbreakers. That's what it attracts because you know, your good heart, there's something that you have to give. There's a lot that you have to offer. So what happens is that it attracts these people and they see open door. It's almost like bees that sees honey. They sees honey, so they know that they can extract from it. But after they extract from it, they're the only ones that benefit from it and not you. And so the Lord's been speaking to me and saying to me, I don't even care how much people I have on here today. I just wanted to come on here to bless whoever's on here today. And so he said to me, you know, you need to stop letting people use you. And I'm, I'm even speaking about this as far as it relates to ministry. I'm talking about as it relates to uh, uh, relationships, as it relates to friendships. Sometimes you need to say, God, remove these people out of my life. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is that you will constantly keep going through a heartbreak. You're going to constantly have these folks use up your finances. They use up your time. They use your heart. And they will discard you. And guess what? Half of these folks don't even care about how they treat you. So sometimes... You have to teach people how to treat you. And, and one of the things that where we have to be careful and why it is important to God our heart, because I'm one of those individuals, I will give and give and give, and I don't know when to stop. And I'm one of those people that will, you know, I will wear out my welcome because I'm so overly kind. But once I get the hint and it's soaked in my soul, 
that switch goes off. I'm one of those people that you can't tell me nothing afterwards. Don't talk to me about no forgiveness. I don't want to hear reconciliation. I don't want to hear no second chances. I don't want to hear, baby, I love you. I don't want to hear none of that. Because I know I'm one of those people that will constantly give. And when I give, there's no more to give. There's nothing left in me to give you. So there's no voice of reason. There is no negotiating about it. Let's talk about it. Let's work this out. There's none of that for me because I gave you everything. Not that I hate you, not that I won't love you. I will love you, but gu I guarantee you, there's nothing left in me to give to you. Huh? Nothing left in me to give to you. Because if you are not careful, one of the things that will begin to happen, that's right, enough is enough. One of the things that will begin to happen is that they will leave you bitter. Are you hearing me? They will leave you bitter, they will leave you angry. They will leave you uh, with unforgiveness. That's the only reward sometimes good people get. Sometimes you question God. You say, God, I don't understand. Is this my reward for having a good heart? The only reward that you will get is being bitter, have unforgiveness, getting slapped in the face, people abusing you. Really, and this is something that I've experienced all my life <clears throat> because of my heart. So I want to admo admonish you today to be very wise, to be very wise in whom you're giving your heart to. Be very selective in this season about your connections. Because guess what? Watch this. Everybody don't really want to connect with you because they they um they want to support you. Some people are there. Watch this. Are there are people that I have done so much for? And am I boasting? Am I bragging about it? No. But there are people who I've done so much for. I've given them, you know, I've given them my time. And when I've given people of my time, they will eat up your time, eat up your time. And at the end of the day, I'm depleted. You won't get a thank you. I'm telling you, you won't get them to say thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. How can I encourage you? What is it that I can do for you? How can I support you? I have seen other people that I have supported, um, supported relentlessly. Not once have I seen those people come on my broadcasting. Hey, prophetess. Hey, how, how are you? Even to say hi. I have not once seen them say hi. I have not once seen them say, oh, let me, let me sow $5 into your, your ministry. I, I thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. And sometimes people don't understand. It is the ones that is giving the most are the individuals that need the most. So you're the one that's constantly pouring out. When really there's nobody to pour back into you. And that's one of the that's one of the tragic things about being a prophet is that you pour out so much and at the ending of the day, there's nobody left to pour into you, and then you are left with your tears, you're left feeling hurt, you're left feeling used up, washed up, abused. And guess what? Because you're giving all of this, casting your pearls among people who are narcissistic. They don't even feel bad about what they're doing. They don't even see what they're doing. They don't feel bad about it. And guess what? Even if you bring it up to them, they will flip the, they will flip the script on you. Role reversal. They will not take accountability to how they have made you feel. Huh? And, and I'm going to talk to you about the spirit of pride. <coughs> Because a lot of people in Christendom, a lot of people in Christendom, especially leaders, especially leaders. I know that leaders are the ones that talk to people and tell people, oh, God said to live this way. God said to live. But these are the individuals that does it the most. I can tell you. Okay. I can tell you. I've seen that it is. And sometimes it is not even the people. It is the leaders that have. That is the one that's operating in the spirit of pride and the spirit of the Viathan. They are the ones, amen, and I'm being honest, I'm saying this as a leader, and this is the truth. They're the ones that always want people to support them, but yet they don't support other people. When people are going through financial crisis, they're not the ones there to support people. They, they want you to support them, love on them, give on them, and some people are married to their dysfunction. I'm, talk, I'm talking about the leaders. There are some people who are married to their dysfunction and you just got to leave them right there in their mess. 
And what's painful and what's hurtful is that those who really do have a good heart, these are the people who don't get the support. But there's the people who are the narcissistic ones. They don't care about the people. Those are the ones that people flock to and give to. And it's sad. And the truth be told, they don't care about the people. You know, and I'm saying this because it has even broken my heart. And I'm saying this as a prophet. And you know why? I have been on both sides of, sides of the coin. I know what it felt like to be abused as a member and as just people in ministry. That's why I'm very careful with how I treat people. I'm very careful with how I treat people. Because I know what it felt like. I know what it felt like when I wanted help and I called on pastors and I could not get their pastors. Nobody was available. They would say they want you to support them, but when you call on them, they ain't picking up their phones. If you text them, they ain't answering you back. If you get them, if you get an administrator on the line, I know what that felt like. But one of the disadvantages for me being available to people is that familiarity comes into play. So, either way, it's almost like you're losing. It's almost like you're losing because you have a good heart. But yet, these are the individuals that, you know, that the people gravitate towards. There are even some leaders, I guarantee you, when you tell the people, they so, 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 so. Let it be one day. Let it be one day. Hey, pastor, I need help with, um, can you help me pay my phone bill? They're not going to help you. You know why half of these people don't have a heart for God's people? And, and, and it, it bothers me. It bothers me. You know, I've been there. I know what it feels like to be abused. And even today, as even as a pastor and as a prophet, I still know what it feels like to be abused. So I take that very seriously. And God is even saying to me, he spoke to me today. He was like, you need to learn how to guard your heart. Guard your heart. And even in relationships, guard your heart. Because everybody is not there because they really love you. People are not really rocking with you because they love you. And so there's a lot of people that are very pretentious. They're very pretentious. People pretend well. And oftentimes, you know, we gravitate to having these people on Facebook because, you know, they have a good marketing team. They know how to market themselves. But people know how to falsely market themselves. So you, you think that they have a lot going on. You think that they're good people. But people are not who they post to be. P-O-S-T. Some people will post, oh yeah, you know, I'm this and I'm that. And they pretend to be one way, but really they're not. That's not who they are in their heart. And so that's what the Bible says, by their fruit, you shall know them. So... In this modern day and age, forget, forget the gift. Don't even look at the gift. Don't even look at the appearance. Don't even look at, you know, how well they're marketing. Don't look at how large their platforms are, how large, you know, their marketing team are, how many people showed up to their conference. Look at their fruit. In this day and age, we need to learn how to Watch people. That's why, oh God, wolves and sheep clothing. That's why I strongly believe that in this hour, God is exposing a lot of people, even in leadership. And God, even if it's me, because you know what? God had enough. God had enough of the pretension. God had enough of people pretending and hurting God's people. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hey, God bless you, um, Angela Wong. Thank you so much for joining in. Enough is enough. Uh, enough. And and just taking and taking and taking and taking and taking. And sometimes, listen, I, if, if there's no other prophet that will be on Facebook Live to say, I will say it. You know why? You know why? Because I'm one of those individuals that I know that God will sustain my ministry. I know God will sustain my ministry. All you need to do is maintain your purity. Just maintain your purity. And I'm telling you, God bless you, Apostle Stacia. Thank you for joining me, woman of God. God bless you, and a happy belated birthday to you, and a happy birthday to you once again. I hope you really enjoyed your day. So I'm, I'm, I'm being very honest. You know, when you have a good heart, people, people will take advantage of you, and people will honestly use you. So let me give you some signs and sin, um, sin, symptoms of how to recognize the spirit of pride. And I'm not gonna, I may even make this a part two. Okay, as I said, 
pride operates also with the spirit of um, Leviathan. It operates with the spirit of Leviathan. So number one, I spoke about on this week that there are some people that they believe they have attained the ascend, ascended knowledge. Ascended knowledge. And these are the hardest people to reach. Who are the hardest people to reach? The, uh, the intellectual apostate. Huh? These are the, uh, the intellectual unsaved hypocrites. Unsafe hypocrites, when they they stick up their religious nose at people, how huh? they have an infatuation with their own intellect, huh? They they elevate themselves beyond the simplicity of fundamental truth. What am I saying to you? That there are some some I'm um, talking about the leaders and even people, but mostly the leaders. There are leaders that they feel like they cannot support other people. Like I thank God for Apostle Station does even on here. I see some folk. You will be you, support them. And they will never support you. They're never there for you. They're bloodsuckers. They're vampires, mosquitoes, rats, snakes, tongue wasters. Are you hearing me? Leeches, caterpillars, canker worm, palmer worm. They're all of that and the above. You need to learn how to, to really consider your connections in this hour. You really have to learn how to consider your connections. Because if you do not consider your connections, I am telling you, people will use you. And you will be left hurting, depleted, brokenhearted, and now they're living happily ever after. But you are taking years to heal because you open your heart to the wrong people. And you know, especially people who are born in the month of November, we, we love hard. Especially if you love hard. When you love hard, I'm even saying this in relationships. That's why I, I'm very even careful but even about relationships. Because you need to guard your heart. People are not always honest. And it's always, it's always, I'm telling you, it is the ones that you think you can trust the most. Those are the individuals you cannot trust. You cannot trust those individuals. Okay, right. The woman God says, I'm still healing. Some people have been hurt and they're still healing from things that happened 20 years ago. And then now God wants to bless you with somebody. God wants to send new connections in your life. He wants to send you people who cares about you. And now you don't even know how to receive those people. Because I can't trust people now because I've been, I've been ratted on. I've, been, I've dealt with so many snakes. I've dealt with so much rats, bloodsuckers, time wasters, ungrateful people. That I don't even know how to receive the new. So now you have to heal from something that somebody did to you years ago and the trauma. And then guess what? There are some people who don't even, they even know. You. I'm going to tell you the most dangerous people to deal with. The ones who know your pain and still cause and inflict pain on you. They know you've been hurt before. They know that you've been through some things. They know that people have used you. And they're the same ones that will turn around and hurt you again. Again. Because they don't care. They don't care. So I'm just going to give you some. So I, I don't know if you guys can relate to me. I don't know. Listen, I, I wasn't even expecting. I wasn't going to come up. But I want to keep my word. Hey, God bless you. I see none other than Pastor Flynn. I'm here. God bless you, man of God. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me today. <clears throat> so you got to be mindful. And really what, what's happening is that it's a spirit of pride and narcissism. So let me give you some symptoms of pride. Number one. You know that you're dealing with an individual that has a spirit of pride when they look down right. They're narcissistic people. They look down on people who are less educated, less refined, or less successful than themselves. I've seen this in church. I've seen this in church that there are some individuals that they may not be the big tithers. But the big tithers, they don't get ordained. They don't get the position. They don't get acknowledged. No, you sit in that seat. You can't run in our clique. You can't be in our group. You know, because you're not as smart. You're not as intellectual. You're not, not, you're not, you're less affluent. You're not, you're not refined. You're not as successful. So guess what? You cannot be in our group. You cannot be in our circle. That is demonic. Who gave you that power and authority? Huh? To look down on God's people. If Jesus himself did not look down on people, who are you? How audacious it is of you to look down on God's people. And you even see this with some pastors, with other pastors. 
Some pastors will never come on your Facebook live because they think they're too big. They will never say, howdy, how are you, how are you doing? They won't show up on your broadcast and they will listen to you because they know you're really saying something. They know you're about that life. They know you're really saying something. And half of those folks are really learning from you. Half of those folks are really learning from you. They really admire you. They're secret admirers or either that they're jealous and they will never come on to support you. They will never show themselves to even support you. Hey, God bless you, prophetess. How are you, one of God? I have, let me tell you, you'd be surprised. I have had some very prominent people. When I say prominent, I'm not talking about no little friars. Some prominent people that I know that is on my stuff. They inbox me. They ask me for advice. They ask me for prophetic word. They ask me for counsel. They ask me for prayer. And half of these folks have large platforms and people follow them but yet ignore me. <laughs> And I'm like, Elmi, if you knew, these same people are the ones who was asking me for prayer. But you know, it's a spirit, right, woman of God, it's a spirit of jealousy. They would never support you because I'm too big, I'm too big, I'm too, you know, I'm pompous. It's that peacock spirit. You know, I'm pompous, you know, I've traveled the world and I've been to that, I've been to nations and I've been here and I've been there. Hey, God bless you, men of God. I see this awesome men of God on here. Um, none other than um, men of God, Philante. I love this man of God. So supportive. I appreciate you. You're a real one. And I thank God for you. I bless God for you. And so, um, you know, they're pompous. They're pompous. They will never support you. Right. Exactly, woman of God. They will never support you publicly. But privately, they know you. You know what I call that? That's that, that's that Nicodemus spirit. The Nicodemus spirit said they really believe in your ministry. They see your works. You know, I'll even talk about relationships. I'm, I'm going to get into relationships in a minute. You know, they see your works. They know you're a good person. They know you got a lot to bring, a so lot to offer. You bring a lot to the table. But guess what? They would never support you. They would never support you publicly because I don't want to be seen associated with this person. You see what I mean? I thought the lady was my friend. I even blessed her today. It was $500. So, so these are the things that I'm talking about. You know, uh, so it's that Nicodemus spirit. And some of you even deal with that in relationships. Don't, don't settle to be somebody in secret. Sometimes you got to treat people how to treat, teach people how to treat you. Don't settle to be nobody's secret. You know, oh, woman of God, can you pray for me? Woman of God, can you fast for me? Woman of God, can you this? And, and, and then guess what? You're their secret ace boom coon, but in public, they will never support you. Even in relationships. Don't let nobody keep you for sloppy seconds or save you for later. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. So, you know, they look down on you because I'm, you know, I'm too affluent. So really, you know, I, I, I can't, be seen with you, I'm affluent, I'm, I'm big, and it's going to look like I'm reducing myself. That is the spirit of pride. Spirit of pride. And the truth be told, I'll be honest with you, I blame the people sometimes. Some of these people need to stop supporting them. So that way they can come off their high horse. Because that's what it is. It's a high horse, they got a peacock spirit. Huh? It's a spirit of pride, it's a spirit of uh, Leviathan, and they're narcissistic. Some of these folks need to stop supporting these people and stop letting them use you. You need to honestly, and I'm learning myself, cut these folks off because, you know, they're not repentant. Not saying don't, don't love them, but they're not repentant. They don't care of how they treat other people. They don't care. Number two. Number two. <clears throat> Let me give you another example. A spirit, another uh, example, a spirit of pride. Is that they have a judgmental spirit. How huh? judgmental. It's a pharisaical spirit. A pharisaical spirit. So, oh, oh, let me give an example. Let me go back to number one. Let me tell you this. There's one day I had went to a church. Mind you, okay, I went to a church. This person invited me to their event. They they privately invited me to the event. I showed to the event because I'm a type of woman that I will make I'll make sacrifice. I go above and beyond. I don't just show up for you. I don't just show up. I show up. I, sh I show up and I show up and I, sh I give. I go above and beyond. I bring the table and I bring seats. 
So when I come, I come good. I don't just come. I show up with all the above. And I went to this event, made the sacrifice. I didn't have to do it. First of all, I'm a prophet. I got obligations. I, I, I have a busy schedule too. But I said, you know what? Let me cancel my schedule just to go to this person's event. <clears throat> I go to the person's event. I promise you. <clears throat> you have all these, these big prominent people in the front. I don't care. I usually sit in the back anyway because I know who I am. I'm confident. And, and it's not that I'm looking for any recognition. I'm just giving you an example of how people will treat you. I'm not looking for any recognition. You ain't got to call my name. I know my name. But it is courtesy <clears throat> that if you invite someone to your event and they show up for you and they support you and have these folks out who will hear who you are looking <clears throat> support from, they don't really support you. But the ones who are supporting you, those are the ones that you're overlooking. So I show up to, I show up to this dude's event. How I show up to this dude's event. And homeboy didn't even say nothing. Like, oh no, God bless you, prophetess. Thank you for coming. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you showed up. Nothing. Homeboy was like, just gave me a quick little... I said, I guarantee you'll never get that opportunity ever again in your life to invite me to a not another one of your events. I promise you. What am I saying? Is that anger and bitterness? No, but you teach people how to treat you. What am I saying to you? <clears throat> what am I saying to you? Is that sometimes, you know, you show up for other people. Maybe you have an event. Maybe you're opening a business. Maybe you're in a relationship. And if you find that you are the one who's putting in all the work and all the effort, but yet there's no reciprocity, that is when the time you need to take a step back, reevaluate that relationship or that connection, and disconnect yourself. Because every relationship, amen, that has true authentic love will be reciprocal. See, you can't fake that. You can't fake sacrifice. People can fake. <clears throat> they can fake words. They can. They, anybody can say, yeah, I love you. I, I, I'm with you. I rock with you. Yeah, I'm loyal to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you can do all of that. But when it comes to making sacrifice, when it comes to making sacrifice, that's what I want to see. When you make sacrifices, then I know what you say is real. When your actions matches, watch this. When your actions matches your words, then I can I can have a measure of confidence. Confidence. I didn't say trust. Now, let me tell you how I know I can trust you. I can trust you when I see patterns. Now, you nowadays, you can't even trust actions. And I'm going to tell you why. Nowadays, you can't even trust actions because people pretend well. I'm going to say that again. Nowadays, you can't even trust actions because people pretend well. So you have to now watch patterns. If people begin to show you who they are, believe them. See, give them chances. But now when you get on your third strike and I see that your patterns and you are inconsistent and you are not saying your mouth is not matching your patterns, then I know I cannot trust you because you're not who you say you are. Your, your words are not matching up with what you're saying. So even in relationships, even I'm just talking with you tonight, even in relationships, you have to learn to stop casting your pearls among swines. Casting your pearls among swines. Stop doing for people who, you're, uh, you know, they, they never do anything for you, never show up for you. Number two, let me give you another sign of pride. Another sign of pride is that they're judgmental. Judgmental people. Okay, they judge everything you do, but they never take the beam out of their own eye. A Pharisee spirit. They judge everything that you do. Huh? They judge everything you do. I don't know if you've ever been there. I, I've, I've, I've had people judge me because of my appearance. You know, um, I, I, I even remember I've dealt with situations, and I'm just talking tonight. <clears throat> I've dealt with situations that sometimes people think that because you have a certain appearance that you don't have a good heart or you're not who you say you are and let me tell you something some of the people who have the biggest hearts are the ones that are unsaved I am telling you some of the most trifling people that you can meet are those that you believe that 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 has the colors 
trifling. They're not real. They're not even about that life. Huh? <clears throat> and so, those are the ones that's unsaved. And I'm even talking to the women, even in ministry too. There are some even women that are, are on the broadcasting that are single. That are single. And you may be saying to yourself, you know, um, oh God, please bless me with a, a great man of God. Lord, I want him to be an apostle. God, I want him to be a prophet. God, let him be a pastor. Let him be. Let me tell you something. Those are the most rotten people you can find. I'm telling you, he must been there, done that. These are some of the most rotten people you can find. All the ones in ministry. I'm telling you. I'm talking. I'm telling you my testimony tonight. Things that I've been through in the past. Even some women are in ministry that you know you might be single and you're saying, God, oh yeah, you know, I want a man, you know, that said that he is an apostle, a prophet, and trust me, half of them are sleeping around, half of them is talking to 10 women at the same time, that's why they can't settle down, they're talking to 10 women at the same time, they're sleeping around, huh? they're fornicating, they can't make up their mind, they're double-minded, they're inconsistent, they're liars, haters, cheaters, huh? They go around playing with innocent women. If I can be real, if I can just be honest and real, I've been, I've dealt with that before. I've dealt with that before. So a lot of times you think that it is these people that looks like, you know, they're spiritual and oh no, they won't do this. Yes, those be them same ones. I'm telling you. That's right, my cousin Cheryl is on the line. Amen, God bless you. She said, they are no different from the ones outside of the church. Let me tell you something, I'm gonna be, if I can be honest with you, there are some men that are outside of the church. They're not saved. They have better hearts than some of the men that are in the church. I'm not lying to you. I've seen it, I witnessed it in my own two eyes. They would have better intentions for you than some of these people out here. I said, as I said to you, half of them sleep around, they're, uh, uh, um, they're, they're fornicating, got 10 women talking to them, 10 women at the same time, gaming people, hurting people's heart, breaking people's heart. Where's the integrity? Where's the integrity? Where's the honesty? And I'm being real. So sometimes, you know, people look at their parents. And, and, and it is the ones that is outside of the church are the ones you can trust mostly. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm talking about ministry related. And also, these are the biggest hypocrites that you, the big, you say you have got to have spiritual discernment concerning these men. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because I'm going to tell you, let me tell you something. Half of them, when you finally get into a relationship with them, that's when, that's when they start changing colors on you. Some of them, even when you marry them, they're, they're not who they say they are. When you finally make the commitment to these individuals, they're not who they say they are. You know, I've, I, I've, I've, there's this one woman that I, I've counseled once and you know, her, her, her and I, I'm not disclosing name. I'm just telling the, the, the situation and the testimony. <clears throat> her husband was supposedly a man of God and he beat her up every night. I was cheating on her. I mean, this man destroyed this woman's life. And if you are not serious about the person, don't go around destroying people if you are not ready for them. Don't go around awakening people's soul, playing games with people if you're not ready for them. And it's sad, I, I take it to heart because I minister to some of these women that are broken. What is this poor woman, you know, she had nine kids for this man and just, just completely love her. So don't, you know, don't awaken a person so if you're not ready to love them, if you're not going to be real, if you're not going to be honest, if you're not going to pastor them the way you should pastor them, don't, don't allow them to become your members. If you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, don't awaken a soul and give them your word and give them your commitment and you play games with it. Don't do that. Because there's sometimes it takes people years to recover and you don't know who is on their last thread. You don't know who's on their last thread. There are some people that they might have said, you know, you don't know who's dealing with depression. You don't know who's dealing with anxiety. You don't know who's dealing with suicide. You don't know who's, and then when they finally open up their heart 
and they trust you again, you're no different from the other perpetrators. Now, where do you leave that person? Where do you leave that person? Now, it's like you cause trauma to that individual. Because now I don't know who to trust. And I don't know, I feel like I'm ministering to some women tonight, maybe even some men, because there are some men that, that are broken too. I don't even know why I'm going in this direction. But I believe that I'm speaking to some people on the line that are broken. Don't awaken a person's soul if you are not ready to love them. And if you no longer want to deal with that person, be integral. Don't ghost them. Don't ghost people. You know, I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I'm ready for this, so I'm going to ghost you. Let me just kind of disappear. Let me go off in the wind. That is not integral. Because guess what? Now you, you make the commit with the person, and the person now is starting to enjoy your company, and then the person started getting to know you, and let me just disappear. And then now here you are. You're left with the thought, God, what, what happened? What did I do? Now you're like, God, what did I do wrong? Is, is there something I did wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Am I cursed? You know, did I say something wrong? And then now you feel the guilt. And that's what they, they, they play the guilt trick. Narcissism. She said, true, I see a prophetess come on alive and dis disgrace her prophet's husband. He was seeing women in the church right in front of his wife. Disgusting. It is disgusting to be going around talking to multiple people. It's disgusting. You know, I don't like that kind of carrying on. I'm sorry. I, I, I really don't. I, I don't. I'm, the one of, I'm one of the people who will call it out. I don't like that kind of carrying on. You, you know, because I say this as a deliverance minister. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because women come to me all the time and they say, Prophet, please count to me. I'm hurting. I'm broken. My husband cheated on me. You know, I, I gave him nine kids. You know, I, it's sad. It's sad. And even in ministry, don't take somebody under your wings and undergird them only to abuse them. Who makes you Lord over God's people? Who made you Lord? Who made you sit at the right hand of God in the seat of throne, in, uh, in the glory, uh, 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 at the right hand of God with the 24 angels? Who gave you that authority? You know, I, I try to be, I, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible. But this stuff, it really breaks my heart. It really does. You know, and, and so, it's a spirit of pride. It's a spirit of pride. And I'm telling you, it's like, I, I saw this one woman, she was just so broken. I mean, this man destroyed her life. Destroyed her life. Somebody said, I just came out of that. You know, it's, it just destroyed her life. And then sometimes when another person or another man or and or women want to come into your life and they want to love you correctly now the next person really love you but you're too fragmented to even love that person and you don't even know what love looks like anymore you're completely numb you're numb you don't even know what it now i don't know how to give love because i i gave so much of it i don't know how to do it anymore i don't know how, i don't know how to receive you I want to receive you. I want to believe you. I want to trust you. But I, I've seen this too many times before. And if I open up, this is going to be the same narrative. It, it, the same thing is going to happen to me. It's trauma. And so now the person who sincerely loves you, sincerely cares about you, then now you leave them with broken pieces. They're fragmented. And then now you hurt the person who really loves you. You're hurting the person that really loves you because they're pouring out and now you don't know how to give to them. You don't know how to give to them because you're, you poured out everything. So now the hurt people hurt people. So the person now who really tried to help to heal you, now I'm bleeding. I don't know why I'm going this direction. I promise you, I'm just being led of the Holy Ghost. I'm just flowing tonight. Now I'm bleeding because I try to pick up your broken pieces. And sometimes you just really got to ask God, God, is this my assignment? Because you can love someone so much that you sacrifice yourself. And then here you are because they're broken, they're shattered, they're fragmented. You're trying to pick up their broken pieces. Now you cut me. Now I'm bleeding. Now we're both bleeding on each other. So who's going to heal who? Who's going to heal who? 
So you're broken, and because you're broken now, you have trust issues because somebody hurt somebody hurt you. So now I'm trying to give you my all. And now when I'm giving you my all, you turn around, reject me. So I'm being rejected when I'm really trying to love you, but you can't have now. Now you can't even give me love because somebody rejected you. So you become, you become that very thing that you despise. You become the very thing you despise. So when another person is trying to give you love, oh no, I can't give you love. So it's a repeated cycle. So you have to really pick and choose your battle. You have to know, okay, some people you have to love them from a distance as much as you want to help them, as much as you want to love on them, as much as you want to give to them, as much as you make sacrifices for them. You got to learn when to, you have to know when to uh, disconnect and, and, and uh, uh, um, remove the life support. You love them and it's going to be hard for you to do it. You love them. Yes, I love, and see, that's the thing. When you love something or someone, it is hard for you to pull the plug because a part of you now feels guilty that is this my is this my fault that I left you to die and I didn't do nothing to help you? You're gonna feel like that. You're gonna feel like, oh my God, I abandoned the person. I pulled the plug on you and I left you to die and I wasn't there for you. But guess what? If you don't pull the plug, then the both of you die. <laughs> so then you have to start thinking self-preservation. I love you, but I, can, I, I this is not my battle. It's not time for me to die yet. Maybe you're dying. I can love you from a distance. I can help you from a distance, but it ain't my time to die yet either. You know, you're bleeding, but why should I bleed? You know, I'm not guilty. I'm not the one that hurt you. I'm not the one that abandoned you. I'm not the one that rejected you. And the crazy part about a person being hurt is that they return back to the very people who are hurting them. They go back to the same thing and the same people who are hurting them. So you know what? I don't really want to pull the plug. So now, watch this. It's almost like a person who's on to life support. You know that that person is dying and they're on life support. And guess what? You know that they're suffering. You know that they're suffering. And then you, you, the doctors are telling you, pull the plug. Because they're suffering. But every time you go back and see them, you're going to suffer too. It's going to hurt you to pull the plug, but at least eventually you'll get over it. But if you, if you keep the plug and they're dying, they're suffering, and then now you go to the hospital every day seeing the same person that's broken. Now guess what? You're going to keep hurting yourself every day. So now you both are slowly dying. One is physically dying and one is emotionally and psychologically dying. Instead of just pulling the plug and saying, you know what? I love you, but we've got to depart. And that's the problem. It is hard to let go. It's hard to let go. You know, we don't want to say our goodbyes. It's hard to let go. It's hard to have closure. So because we don't want to have closure, we, we, we stay stuck in the memories of the past. So that's what happens. Some of us are married to memories and we're not married to our now. So guess what? Our now suffers because we're still in covenant with our memories. And that's all it is. It's memories. Memories has nothing to offer you. Memories have nothing to offer you. Some of you are in relationships, whether it's with your children, whether it's in relationships, whether it's with ministries, you're stuck on memories. Oh, I'm stuck in the good times. I remember when, yeah, that brother, you know, he whined and dined me and we had a good time and we shared good words. But guess what? You, you are not at that place. Or maybe it's a woman. Maybe that woman loved on you, but guess what? You're not at that place anymore. So here you are. You're stuck psychologically in your mind. When God is saying, hello, hey, your future is right here. Your future is now. Your future is right in front of your face. And God is giving you your now season. He's giving you a new blessing. Maybe God want to give you a new man. Maybe God want to give you a, a, a new good woman. Maybe God wants to give you something new. A new church. A new church home. He wants to give you a new life. A new beginning. But I'm so stuck in the past. I don't know why I went in this direction. I really don't. But I'm so stuck in the past that I'm married to my memories. Because those were so much good memories. And I just don't want to let it go. So watch what happens. Because you are in covenant with your past, what happens now is that 
what God wanted to give you has, has a time frame on it. A time frame. Because we operate in time and seasons. Huh? Chronos time and Kairos moments. So now we operate in time and seasons. And God's saying, here is the blessing. <laughs> and one of the things that we do, we have the blessings, but we do not take the opportunity at the blessing that God is giving us. Because I can't see what's in front of me. How can you see the blessing in front of you if you're still looking back at the past? You can't be in two directions at one time. So now you're, you're, you're double-minded. Uh, you know, I want this, but then I want this. You know, I miss this, but then I want this. So now you don't know what you want. You're double-minded. And God said, I'm trying to bless you. There's something new I'm trying to give you. This is going to bless you real good. And this time I'm going to make it right. But now I'm stuck in the past. And I can't see it. I can't see my blessing. I can't see what's right in front of me. Huh? I cannot see what's right in front of me. Because I'm married to my memories. Memory, married to my memories. And guess what? Because we love that thing so much. We keep returning back to the thing that's hurting us. And we know it's hurting us. We know it's hurting us. We know it's, that's the thing that caused you to bleed. That's the thing that caused the trauma. That's that thing that caused the pain in your life. And guess what? I, but I, I just love this and I can't, I can't let it go. So guess what God does? That very thing that you put on hold or that person that you put on hold, God takes it and give it to somebody else. So now, not only did not only are you hurting now, but you missed your season. You missed your breakthrough. You missed your blessings. And you missed what God had for you because you were worried about what you had. Let me say that again. You missed what God had for you because you missed what you had. You missed it. And I'm talking, I'm even talking about people who's been in relationship. In relationship. God want to bless you with a husband or wife. But I'm so stuck on, you know, you know, um, let me be careful with names. You know, uh, brother so-and-so, you know, boy, you know, I can't get my mind off of this one. And God's like, no, I'm trying to bless you with this too. But now, nah, you know, he was real street. He was real, you know, I like this personality. And God's like, I want to give you somebody that's going to romance you. I want to give you that someone's going to love you. Or maybe it's a, 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 another person. You know, that woman treated you bad. She was a Jezebel. But I want to give you somebody who's a wife. You know, you're used to stripper women, but I want to give you a woman that's a wife. But no, I, you know, I'm so used to the stripper because the stripper, you know, the stripper woman, you know, she, she made me feel good and bad. But, but what, what happens now when you can no longer do the things that you used to do? I don't know why I'm going this way. But what happens now when you can no longer offer services to the stripper woman and your benefits run out? Now you need a wife that will really take care of you. So, I, you know, you, you're so used to the thrill. I was talking about pride. I don't know I went this direction. I'm going to go back there. So you're, you're so used to the thrill. And that's what happens. And I see this also with good men and good women. Good, good men and good women. You're a good man and a good woman. And you're like, okay, yes, here I am. But they will diss you for somebody who won't even care about them. Huh? Especially even with women. You know... They want women to be a certain way, big, bad, bougie. I want them stripper women. You know, I want them Cardi B's and I want the um, Nicki Minaj and I want that WAP and I want that. Guess what? I bet you when you don't have no more money, I bet you when you're probably sick, I bet you when you go through all of that, who's going to be there for you? Now the thrill and all your benefits done ran out. Guess what? They're going to leave you right with all the stuff that left you. Or even with or even with men. God wants to bless you with the good men, but guess what? I can't get past this one. And God's trying to send you like someone who's gonna ro romance you and treat you well. But no, he's too soft. No, 
he's too, you know, he's too simple. No, he's not a prophet. No, he's not an apostle. No, he's not a bishop. He doesn't have a big accolade. He's the average Joe, but I guarantee you it's the average Joe that he's going to come home every night and he won't be cheating on you. He's going to come home every night. He's going to come home to you and to you only. He's going to give you accountability. He's going to respect you. He's going to love you. That's why I'm a woman. I'm not even overly selective. Yes, I have standards, but I have learned as I've matured as a woman. I don't know why I'm going this direction. I have matured as a woman. Don't, don't be looking for all that extra stuff. You know, I want him to have nice hair, and I want him to be tall. You know, a glad, no, tall glass of water, and I want him to be tall and nice body. You know, I have my preference. I like men that are tall, you know, 6'1", six, 6'5", six six you know, tall, nice teeth, light skin, or Caucasian, nice hair. You know, just banging but guess what those be the ones that don't treat you well they talking to you and 10 other people and then maybe this man he's an average joe maybe he just looks normal he may be not the the or he or she may be not be your preference but it's god's perfect will but your pride is in the way your preference is in the way that you can't see the perfect will of god standing right in front of you so now when somebody else gets the blessing that God has for you, oh God, you know, nobody loves me. Then here you go again with your pity party. Nobody loves me. People walking out my life. Nobody cares about me. Nah, 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 nah. No, you just like your dysfunction. That's what it is. You like your dysfunction. So God will allow you to, he will allow you to stay in your dysfunction because every time God is trying to set you free, you go back to bondage. You know, you like that Egyptian, you had that Egyptian mentality. You like bondage, you like chains. Truth be told, you like, you like, you're so used to um, somebody talking down at you. You know, if a, if a man or woman come into your life, or even a pastor, you know, you ever see some people in churches that, some people are in churches and the pastors treat the people mean, but those are the ones you respect. Yes, pastor, yes, master, you respect those pastors. But the one that's really loving you, hey, you know, um, how are you? I'm just checking on you today. Oh, yeah, Prophet is McLean. I'm all right. Yeah, uh-huh. But then you complain nobody's there for you. Or maybe God sends you a real friend, but you're not used to having real people in your life. That now, every, when a real person comes to your life, now you're suspicious. So a real person comes into your life now, and they check on you. Hey, I'm just checking on you. How are you? Are you okay? Just want to tell you I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for everything you do. I honor you. Now you look at that person like a nuisance. Oh my God, that person is so annoying. I... You know why? Because you like dysfunction. You like change. You like bondage. And sometimes you got to let them have it. So people can learn how to treat you. Sometimes you got to let things go. They take it for granted. You got to let them go. So they can know what they had. So that when they come back, they're like, wow, this person was really good. But if you keep giving to them, they will never value you until you let them go. They will never value you until you let them go. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, the relationships. You know, I've seen, even seen some pastors just, just absolutely mean to people. There are people who I called on. And I say, I, I'm calling them and say, hey, you know, I'm just checking on you. I'm going to give you an example. I said, hey, so-and-so, I'm just calling to check on you. That's one of the things I do. I check on people all the time. Hey, I'm just calling on, checking on you. See how you're doing. Hey, woman of God, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm going to be sowing my seed. That's insulting. I didn't ask you for no seed. You know what? Because you're used to being abused by those other pastors that now when a real person calls you and they're genuinely checking up on you, you automatically think seed. That's insulting to me. I'm not asking you for that. I care about you. <laughs> I care. I'm not asking you for any of that. Or maybe you have a friend. Hey, I'm, I'm checking on you. Um, are you okay? Oh my God, what does she want now? Uh, what is she? First of all, you should be grateful somebody checking up on you. You should be grateful that somebody cares about you enough, amen, to reach out to you. Taking the time out of their busy schedules but we go chasing the ones that don't love us. We love who don't love us. And who love us, we don't love. Let me say that again. We love who don't love us. 
and those who don't love us, we love. So now when we stop caring, because I done gave you everything now, when we stop caring, Lord, look, you keep tossing me to the side, you keep kicking me to the curb, so guess what? I'm not welcome anymore. I'm going to stop doing what I do. Don't get suspicious now. Don't think that, oh, guess what? Oh, see, now you mean. You don't really care about me. You said you love me. Oh, see, oh, you used to be nice. Yes, that's right, I used to be. So now that when you set boundaries and you teach people how to treat you and when you set boundaries now, oh, you change. Yes, I did change because I'm not going to let you hurt me. I'm not going to let you continue. I don't care if it is your kid, if it's your boyfriend, if your girlfriend, and if it's your family, if it's your pastor, if it's your friends. Stop letting people use you. Stop letting people use you. And it's the truth. I really hope I'm helping. I don't know. I don't know why I went in this direction, but this really, you know, this was on my heart today. Because the Lord said to me, he said to me, guard your heart. Even up, I was just about to come on the broadcasting. Another prophet texted me. And he said, you know, the, the Spirit of the Lord said to share this message with you. Message with you. When God, the Lord says, um, stop letting people use you. Stop let the man of God, I never had a conversation with this man. Stop. So we love who don't love us. And who we love. Who we love don't love us. Sometimes you're going to learn how to remain exclusive. Let them miss you. Set your boundaries and let them miss you. Teach people how to treat you. Because when people show you how, who they are, believe them. And when people show you their true colors, stop trying to repaint them. Oh no, but they're not really like that. You know why? Because you can't. A part of you can't accept the reality of what you're seeing. Now you're seeing true colors. You don't know. You can't accept the reality of what you're seeing. So you're saying to yourself, you know, um, no, they're not really, you know, not really like that. No, they love me. So then now you start lying to yourself. <laughs> you start lying to them. They love me. No. And they, they, they don't really mean it. They don't, they, no, it's not that. They don't really mean it. Maybe I should continue supporting them. I should, should continue. And they're telling you. They're telling you either blatantly. They're telling you either blatantly, verbally, or they will even tell you in silence. Do you know sometimes people talk to you in silence? The fact that they don't talk to you anymore, they are telling you they don't care. The fact that people don't exchange words with you anymore, they're basically telling you, you no longer have significance in my life. Sometimes it is okay. Take your L's and go. Because eventually, the people, they will, those people will realize that you were sincere and real. Take your L's and keep it moving. And guess what? Stick to the ones that love you most. People that love you most, support them. You know what I do? Iron, sharpen iron. The ones that support me, those are the people I support. Sometimes I used to support everyone. Oh, yeah, Dehima's here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here for you. Guess what? I'm learning to start to match energy. Match, that's right, read between thin lines. So, you know, read between thin lines. And they're, they're telling you, I don't, really, I don't really like you like that. I don't want to have nothing to do with you, really. But here you are, you're expressing all your love to them. Uh, they give you half change and you give them your all. You don't deserve that. I'm talking to somebody out here. And I'm even talking to Dehima. You don't deserve it. You deserve better than that. You deserve wholeness. You deserve people that's going to love you. That appreciate what you bring to the table. That appreciate your time. That appreciate um, your giving. Thank you so much, man of God. I see none other than Apostle Tyson on here. God bless you. I truly appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. So, you, you know, you really have to be mindful. You've got to be mindful. And, and it's, it's sad that it is mostly even the pastors that truly care. The pastors that truly care about the souls of the people, that care for the people. Guess what? One of the things that the people do, they, they shun the ones that care. And they run to the big name people that don't care about them. Are you hearing me? Some of these international speakers that are on the large platform, they don't know you. They don't know you. 
I'm not saying that you cannot support who you want to support, but they don't know you. Guess what happens? It is when two, three o'clock in the night when the demons are beating you up, you need help, financial support, family member died, you call on the ones that you know are available. Hey, prophet is so-and-so, or you call on pastors that really care. Which means that they know where to find you, but they don't, they don't honor you enough. They don't honor you enough to support you and your ministry. But they will support the large name pastors who don't even know your name. Oh, guess what? I'm going to a um, bishop or pastor, prophet, so-and-so conference. And guess what? In so-and-so conference, you are number, number 1,015. You, you're, you're number 1,500. You're just a number to them. But the pastors who is willing to get up out of their beds to talk to you, those are the people you don't even support. And it is sad. I'm talking to the pastors. I'm talking about relationships. I'm, I'm just trying to be um, general here so that I can be relatable to all of you. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen people who I... I've gotten a three, four, five o'clock in the morning. My phone constantly goes off, hardly getting sleep, getting rest. Hey, Lord God, please pray for me. You know, a spirit of manifesting. Can you pray for me? You know, depression. Oh, I'm having problems. Oh, and I get up and I make sacrifice. Guess what? Oh, I'm about to get evicted. They know where to find help. Oh my God, I'm about to get evicted. Can you help me with my rent? Sure, woman of God. Sure, man of God. I'll help you with your rent. I give them that. Guess what? I don't hear another word from them. I'm not saying that you're obligated to me because I gave to you. No, you're not obligated to me. No, but at least show honor. Show honor. I'm telling you, honor goes a long way. And that's why I'm telling you the truth. A lot of people are not, they don't prosper because they don't have honor. Honor goes a long way. And guess what? Even people who have wronged you, if you want to go far in life, if you want God to bless you, learn to be kind. Learn to be loving and show honor. Even to the ones, I'm not saying to be a fool. Don't let your loyalty make you a fool. But show honor. It goes a long way. There are even some people who have broke my heart. People who disrespected me. People who tossed me to the side. They kicked me to the curb. People who didn't believe in me. But guess what? I honor, 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 honor. And do it with a good heart. Because honor will take you a long way. And I've learned to master the principle of honor. Pray for, and I don't care what nobody says. Pray for those people who despitefully use you. Pray for those people who curse you. Bless and do not curse. I know people are saying all these other stuff out there, but I'm telling you, God will reward you. It takes you a long way. It is a sign of maturity. I have people that have done me so wrong, abused me, ostracized me, criticized me. And I said, God, I pray for them. I said, God, I bless them. Lord, I love them. God, and I, and I do, and I guess what? The moment, at one point, I used to be like, you know what? I don't like those people. I don't want to have nothing to do with them. I don't care about them. And guess what? Door shut in my face. And I was saying to myself, God, I wonder, you know, why is that my ministry is not being blessed? This was a season in my life. God, why is that my ministry is not being blessed? God, what's going on with my ministry? You know, why doors are not opening? Why can't I finish school? Why can't um, my finances are not are flowing? What's wrong with my finances? What's wrong with my relationship? God, what's wrong? God says your heart, your heart, you had unforgiveness in your heart. You wasn't right. I'm talking about this a while ago. You wasn't right. But God, these people hurt me. They hurt me. God don't care if they, listen, yes, he does care if they hurt you, but guess what? They, they, they might have hurt you, but it's your responsibility to love and forgive them. Yes, they hurt you. Maybe you are not the one that hurt them. They hurt you. And you feel justified in yourself. They hurt me, so let me return fire for fire. Let me vindicate myself. Let me show them who's boss. Let me tell you, there, there are days I get like that. There are days, you know, that's it. I'm done. I'm de I'm just, I get like that. So God says, humble yourself. Because guess what? You need mercy too. Humble yourself. Because you need forgiveness too. I forgave you when you, you were not always perfect. Let me deal with them. Pray for them. That's your response. Your responsibility is to love them and to pray for them. 
Now, I'm not saying for you to be a fool. You don't have to be a fool for these people. But humble yourself. Don't be prideful. Oh, you know what? Well, guess what? They're going to come back and apologize to me. They're going to come back and this and they're going to come back. Guess what? That's pride creeping in because I'm hurt. You wronged me. I'm hurt. So you are entitled to me now. You're entitled to me. You are the ones who should be asking me for forgiveness. You are the ones who should be doing this. And you, 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 you. And we play the blame game. Instead of saying, God, was I a contributing factor to that? Is there something that I've done wrong? And if you didn't do something wrong, God, forgive them. God, I forgive them. So one day God says, you know, these people wronged me. People have wronged me in my life. And then one day God says to me, you know, I'm like, nothing's happening. God says, you need to forgive them. I don't forgive them. I pray for them. Yeah, God forgave them. No, you didn't forgive. You said it with your lips. Huh? You said it with your, you said it with your mouth. But you didn't say it from your heart. You didn't say it from your heart. That's why some of us, you know, God can't bless you with a spouse. He can't bless you with a husband. He can't bless you with a wife. He can't bless you with uh, um, uh, 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 certain things in your life. Because guess what? If you don't heal, if you don't forgive, you're going to sabotage, you're going to sabotage that new thing because you're holding on to the things from your past. You're going to treat that new thing like how the other thing treated you. Let me give you an example. I I'm going to give you an example. Let's just hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically speaking. Let's say, say if God wants to bless you with a husband. Let's just say some other man wronged you. Some other man cheated on you and lied on you. I'm not saying it's easy to trust people. Because trust is earned. But now say God gives you a good husband. I give you a good man. And the man happens to be coming home late. You know he had a long day of work. He came home late. But you know you're so used to be abused. You're so used to all of that stuff. And he comes home late. Guess what you do? You're ready to fight. The whole day, where is he? Now, because you know what? That person cheated on you before. So all you can think about is the person who cheated on you before. And this one incident just reminded you of what you went through before. Because you didn't heal. So the man probably got home late. Because he probably do overtime for you so he can provide for you. Maybe it's your birthday and he wants to do something special for you. So he decided to, to do overtime. And then the man gets home late. Done had a hard day. It's work. And then the whole day now you sitting down like, you know, what can I do? I'm going to punish him. <laughs> you know, I'm going to punish him. I'm going to let him feel my wrath. I'm going to, man, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. You know, and you think of all these devious stuff in your mind. You know, yeah, you know, maybe I should pick him up with the car seat all the way leaning back. Maybe I should let him, make him jealous. <laughs> maybe I should, let me tell you something. We women can think some things, boy. We can conjure up some stuff. <laughs> You know, let me pick him up with the car seat all the way back. Let me make him jealous. Yeah, let me show him this, this other banging guy on my page. Let him feel it. I want him to feel it. You know, let him, sh let, let me, I want to show him I have options too. <laughs> no, let's come, let's be real. We even do stuff like that. You know, <laughs> I got options. I mean, it's true. We do have options, right? <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I do have options. <laughs> You know, I got a whole lot of them. But, you know, I'm going to let him feel it. I got options. Yeah. So then he comes home. You already have, your, you know, your, your, your rag. What do you call it? In Jamaica, we call it tie-in. You know, you have your rag on your head. Scarf. Yeah, that's the word. The scarf on your head. You know, and you ready to fight. Your, your head face is all greased up. You ready to fight. Where were you? You know, you got the knife all out. You got, you just ready to shake. <laughs> Where were you? You know you came home late. Nah, 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 nah. And the poor man probably, why? Because what somebody else did. <laughs> you know, we could conjure up some stuff, boy, I tell you. So, you know, it is important that you get delivered. Or one of the things that you do, all right, was get, guess what? Since he came home, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, do something real spiteful. I'm going to buy some lingerie. I'm going to lay it right there. Some new lingerie with the tags on it. And he going to be like, who's that for? And be like, oh, what, what, what this? <laughs> you know, just, you make, you trying to make the man jealous. <laughs> you know, and I'm just being silly. I'm being honest, but I'm being I'm, This is the reality. You know, you buy some nice lingerie, the poor husband like, oh, that's for me. Oh, what's for you? 
You know, you come home or you probably, you take out, you take it off and he's like, oh, I've never seen that before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, yeah. So where are you coming from? Oh, somewhere. You know, you're supposed to give the man accountability and tell him where you're coming from. <laughs> she said, prophetess, get out of my head. <laughs> you're supposed to give your husband accountability and tell him where you're coming from. You know, oh, I'm just coming from somewhere. I was taking care of something. Somewhere like where? You know, where you coming from? Somewhere. You know, I'm busy. And then guess what? Now you're doing it on purpose. Because then he said, then, then he goes, oh, but I want to know where you were. So where were you? Because we're trying to find a way to bring up his story. Because we wanna, we're not going to let it go now. We want him to feel, we want him to feel it. So where were you the other night? You know, when you came in late. So you don't tell me what to do because you did it too. We do that. So this is the things that I'm saying to you, you know, <laughs> in relationships that we, we do these things. No, I'm not saying I do that in real life. <laughs> I'm not saying that we do that in real life. Uh, did he would do that in real life? I'm just saying that we think of things like that. <laughs> you know, but I, I think every little, every woman has a little bit of, Michael Myers in them, and I don't care what nobody say. I know I'm not the only one. Every little, every woman have a little bit of Michael Myers. We got some Freddy. We got a little Chucky. We got some Jimmy. We got a little bit of that in us. If you would be honest, he said, "Oh my God, this live though." <laughs> no, no, the brothers y'all got it too. No, don't, don't even try to put it on the sisters. I'm not trying to make this a relationship segment. I promise you, the next Thursday I'm gonna stick to the topic on the spirit of pride. I will. The topic was supposed to be on the spirit of pride. I was going to talk about that. I don't know why it went this direction. And I may talk about a little bit of stuff. I'm going to come up here in the next maybe 15 minutes. But, um, you know, the, the brothers do it too. The brothers do it too. Uh, so, you the, you know, uh, Bishop, you know, don't make it look like us women are the only ones. Because what are the, let me go to the brothers. What are the things that the brothers begin to do, right? You know, you'll play a woman... <clears throat> You'll play that woman, huh? Or you'll act like you don't care. But the moment the woman's showing you that she got a replacement, that's when you lovey-dovey again. <laughs> Y'all lovey-dovey again. And, and then guess what? Then you oh, who was he? You know, oh, who was that dude with the slick hair? You know, oh, who was that dude? Who was he? You know, oh, oh you know, you trying to play me? So no, don't act like, you know, don't act like you didn't care. Oh, so you do care. But you just, you just want to try to say it though. You know, so the men do it too. <laughs> We're not the only ones. <laughs> he said, I went there because the spirit wanted it to go there. <laughs> so, but guess what? This is all relating to the spirit of pride. And we do that in relationships. We do that and we do where the spirit of pride will not make you say, you know, honey, I'm sorry. I was wrong. You know. I was trying to make you jealous. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, we don't want to say sorry. We don't want to express our feelings. We don't want to be sentimental about it. <laughs> we don't want to be sentimental about it. We don't want to say, especially men. Those old, you know, Bishop, y'all the ones that got the egos. You know, you don't want to say, you know what, yeah, I, I really do love her. I really do, you know, I really do care about her. Y'all, y'all, y'all will... Y'all will fake the funk and act like you don't care. But the moment that woman starts to go left or uh, have a replacement, oh, 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 no, 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 I didn't care, you know. You know, but really, that, it's pride. It's pride instead of saying, you know, I really do love you. I really do care about you. Um, you know, I really do want to be with you. But hey, honey, this is how I'm feeling. You know, sweetheart, this is how I'm feeling. Uh, let me just tell you what's in my heart. Let me communicate what's in my heart, you know, about you. He said, I've been delivered 25 years now. Well, I, praise God. <laughs> or instead of that woman saying, you know, I'm sorry. You know, you know you was wrong. You know you wronged that man. You know you made him feel bad. But instead of, you know you were trying to make him jealous. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm sorry. I, I didn't really mean it. Us women, we don't like apologizing. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I wasn't mature. You know, I was wrong. I misjudged you. It's pride. And let me tell you something. I'll be honest with you. A lot of relationships end. Not because two people. Not because two people are. Not because two people are not in love with each other. They end because of, they, they end because of pride. So sometimes the greatest 
um, distance and, and uh, distance between two people is misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, ego, pride, lack of communication. Sometimes God is like, you know what? This is the people that you need in your life, but it's misunderstanding, ego, pride. I'm telling you, pride is a killer. Pride is a killer. Pride can kill your ministry. Pride can kill your calling. Pride can kill your relationships. Pride kill friendships. Pr Man, I'm telling you, pride is a killer. It will kill everything if you uh, would allow it. So pride is very, very serious. Pride is a very serious thing. Let me give you another point. And I'm going to be out here for another one more, number 10 more minutes. And I'm going to disconnect. Guys, if you have any questions for me, as I said, I wanted to just come on here tonight. I really wasn't planning to, but I wanted to keep my word because I am consistent. I'm loyal. I'm faithful to what I say. So I wanted to be on here with you guys. <clears throat> um, and so if you have any questions for me, please let me know. And I promise you, I will answer those questions. Um, maybe some of you also, as I'm compelled to say this, some of you are probably are having a hard time trusting again. But you know what? We have to start the healing process. You have to start the healing process. You know, I, I've been through some things in my life. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't trust this person. I don't trust. But the healing. And guess what? When you, pride will allow men and women to put up walls. I've even seen that in relationships, in ministry, in any form of connections. You put up walls. And the walls keeps people out and then one of the things that we do we say oh god you know people left my life nobody don't love me they rejected me they're not here for me god they don't care about me oh you know and, and guess what you get all bitter but you're bitter because you're the problem you're the one that's dysfunctional you know because guess what you're the ones who put up the wall i'm not saying don't listen guarding your heart is different from building walls I'm going to say that again. Guarding your heart is different from building walls. When you guard your heart, you act accordingly. You move with wisdom. But when you are building walls, you keep everybody out. So now, you know, nobody will love me. The world rejected me. Oh, everybody's wrong. And you, I'm so right. I'm the victim. And look at me. I've been crying. Poor little old me. Pity party, pity me. No, you build the wall. And so when God is saying, but I send you the boat. But you don't want to get on the boat. I send you destiny helpers. But guess what? You're so dysfunctional. You have that wall. That guess what? I'm not willing to take a risk. And guess what? Love is a risk. Starting a business is a risk. Huh? Uh, uh, starting a ministry. Joining a ministry. Trusting people. That's all a risk. The, but watch this. The greatest risk is to take no risk at all. And guess what? You live and you learn. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take your L's and learn from it. Turn your wounds into wisdom. Guess what? So sometimes what you thought was a loss was really a lesson. Turn your wounds into wisdom. God, yes, you know what, God, I'm not gonna lie, that did hurt me. But now I know what to look for next time. Now I know if I go to another church and they abuse me, now I've learned the sign of abuse. Now I know a counterfeit, a, a different from an authentic person. If you get into a relationship, oh no, oh no, I've seen this before. I know time wasters. Now I know what a time waster look like. I know what a leash look like. I know what a game player look like. I know what a liar looks like. I, now I know what it looks like because I've, I've been wounded before and I've turned my wound into wisdom. But one of the great greatest risk is to take no risk at all that when somebody really wants to love on you or when God wants to give you new opportunities give you new opportunities new blessings newness new beginnings that you build the wall so fortified that not even God can get through to you and so here it is <clears throat> You will have God talking to you. God is talking to you. I'm trying to heal you, my son. I'm trying to heal you, my daughter. I want to give you something new. I want to give you a new spouse. I want to give you a new ministry. I want to give you a new beginning. I want to give you a fresh start, a new outlook in life. I want to heal you again. I want to bless you again. But guess what we do? We hear God for one day. Oh, yes, God, I, I receive. Yes, Lord, I receive. And truth be told, you go right back to the thing. A dog returning back to its own vomit. Huh? 
You go back to the thing that God just delivered you from. You're addicted. That's that's your problem. You you either build walls or you're addicted. So it's like you're a crackhead. Really, it's like you're 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 a crackhead. You know you ever seen a like I'm not trying to sound derogatory, but you ever seen a crackhead like you know they they so devil and cracking. You know the crack makes them. They know crack is bad. But the cracks make them feel good because they give you a high. That's how we are in relationships. You know, that person made me feel good. So, you know, you're on crack. You know, you feel, it gave you a high. You feel good about that. And God's like, this is not good for you. It's, it's killing you. It's poisoning you. And you heard God, oh, yes, you know, I want to stop. I'm going to go to rehab. And you go to rehab one day, spiritually speaking, emotionally speaking, psychologically speaking. You go to rehab one day, and oh yeah, I'm in rehab, yeah, I'm in rehab, I feel good. Day two, dang, you know, yeah, I'm in, I'm in rehab, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm like, guess what? Now you're going through withdrawal symptoms, and you start itching. <laughs> you start itching now, you know, you start getting itch, and the, the chills, and sweat, and cold sweat. That's what we do in relationships, in ministries, in situations that we know is like crack. We know it's not good for us, but we go right back to it. And we have withdrawal symptoms. And God says, look, the withdrawal symptoms is going to hurt you. <laughs> the withdrawal symptoms is going to hurt you. Guess what? It's going to hurt, but it's going to also heal you. But you cannot go back to that place where I have delivered you from. I want to give you something new. And guess what? Sometimes we allow our preference to get in the way of God's perfect will. God is saying here, I am giving you something that I know is good for you. Even relationships. You know, I want that woman. She big, bad, and bougie. You know, I want, the, I want my woman to be like this. I want my woman to have a certain accolade. But you're not seeing that maybe that woman's not good for you. Maybe it's the woman that's gonna, you know, she's humble, but guess what? She's powerful at the same time. That's the woman's gonna be there for you. When you go through trying time, she's gonna rock with you. But we don't want that. Even there are some men that are honest men, good men, average Joe. You know, they may not have the six figures or, you know, six feet tall. But you know what? They will love on you. So don't let your preference make you miss God's perfect will. And then we can't blame God. Oh, God, you know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the right man. God's going to make you going to sit right there waiting because I done send you somebody. I done send you destiny helpers. And now you let your, your season opera and opportunities pass you by. Don't blame me. Now you crying back to me. Don't blame me. No, you're going to wait another 40 years in the wilderness. You're going to wait another 40 years and you're going to wait a whole other season until you learn your lesson. Watch this. I'm going to tell you what God would do. Sometimes, I promise you I'm going to say this and close it out. I'm going to drop a bombshell on you. Sometimes, God will give you your preference in a package that you don't like. Mm. Listen, I'm going to drop that bombshell. Sometimes, God will give you your preference in a package that you don't like. So watch this. God says, what if I give you a woman? Huh? I give you a woman. She has every quality that you're looking for. But I'm going to package it in such a way that you can't see it unless you are spiritual enough to inquire of me to see it. So God said, you know what, this is everything you're looking for. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to distort it. I'm going to tweak it just a little bit. Just to see if you're still shallow. Just to see if you're prideful. Oh, but God, I want this and I want that. And God says, okay, I'm going to see. I'm going to see what you're going to do. But you know what? Your blessing was disguised in a different package, but you were too shallow and too prideful to see it. You were too broken to see it. I was trying to give you what you want, but I packaged it a different way just to show you that you really didn't get deliverance. <laughs> I'm showing you, my son, my daughter, you really didn't get the deliverance that you needed. <laughs> my best friend is typing me while I'm on the broadcasting. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Pastor Grace, please leave me alone until I get off my broadcasting. <laughs> so sometimes um, God, will, God will package it differently just to show you you didn't get your deliverance. You're still not healed. 
you're still not delivered. You still, you know, you're still shallow. You're still prideful. And I gave you what you needed. Pastor Gray, stop starting trouble, please. I gave you what you needed in a different package. But you missed it again. Because you still didn't learn your lesson. And you know what? Guess what? This package is going to go to somebody else who appreciate it. Because you're not humble enough to receive it. You're not deliberate enough to receive it. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And guess what? Sometimes, here's, here's another thing God's going to do. I'm not going to force it down your throat. But guess what? <clears throat> if, if God gives somebody a gift and they push it away, do not blame that person that they left you. I'm going to say that again. If God is blessing you with something or someone, and God says, here, I want to give you this wife. I want to give you this husband. I want to give you this blessing. Don't be like, don't push them away. And then be like, oh, you gave up on me. I ain't give up on you. You gave up on it. You know, sometimes people will do that because they lack accountability. So they will push you away and then say you gave up on them. I didn't give up on you. No, you gave up on it. So, uh, you because you don't want to take accountability, you don't want to take accountability for the fact that God blessed you with something and now you push it away and you lost it. Now you're saying that, oh, see, no, you are the one and you play the blame game rather than say, you know what? I was not prepared to receive that which God had for me. Don't blame God that you missed out on your blessing. Don't blame God that God wanted to give you something, but you missed it. Don't blame God that you didn't get the healing. God is a healer. Don't blame God. Oh God, I need you to heal me. God, I've been trying to heal you, but you're still holding on to that situation. Oh God, you're not healing me. Oh God, I need deliverance. Oh God, cut these people out of my life. Why are you still going back? Oh God, you know, I keep thinking about this person. I keep thinking about... Why? Because you're married to your dysfunction. That's your deliverance. Then you can see what I have for you. So listen, uh, guys, I've been on here for, I've been on here, what time? I think 8 o'clock. So I really hope this message bless you guys. This is something that I've been experiencing myself. Okay, so I'm learning myself. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask me. I'm learning myself. The Lord said to me today, guard your heart. He said, guard your heart. And, and I, you know, I, I feel so bad for my best friend on here, Pastor Kevin Graves. I appreciate him. He doesn't even know. I have to give him a public announcement. I appreciate this man of God from the bottom of my heart because, boy, do I harass him every minute. <laughs> I be like, Pastor Graves, you know this person did this to me. And Pastor Graves, how dare that person? And he's like, I done told you. I done told you. And I'm just like, Okay, I learned my lesson, and I go back to it. Oh, Pastor Gray, he's like, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start answering my, I'm gonna start answering my phone because you ain't learning, you know. But I thank God because, you know, my best friend, him, uh, him and and you know, he said, Lord, help me. <laughs> you know, him and Eno, you know, are my accountability partners. They are the ones that I I call on, you know, because you need accountability partners. Really, you do. You know, when you're going through trying times and you're going through situations, don't try to fight battles on your own. That's when the devil will beat you up. You know, some days I call my best friend and be like, <laughs> he's like, what's wrong now? I'm mean, like, <laughs> you know, and really you need accountability parts. You need people who you can cry on. You need your Jonathans. So I thank you, Pastor Grace, for being a Jonathan. Thank you, Eno, for being a Jonathan. You know, because you need accountability. Because if you don't have an outlet, uh, uh, oh yes, Bishop Sean Lewis is on here. He's another one. <laughs> you know, if you don't have accountability, guess what? That thing, that situation will eat you. It will, it will, it will tear you apart. It will tear you apart. You'll start losing sleep over it. You know, you start having insomnia. You start feeling anxious. You start crying. You start feeling, oh God. It, and God saying, just release. So I thank God for my accountability partners. He said, you're welcome. See, um, my, uh, uh, Pastor Grace has been my friend for over 12 years. And I appreciate this man of God. Let me tell you something. If you can find at least, if you can find real Ace Boon Kung, stick to the ones that love you most. 
Stop giving your loyalty to leeches. I'm going to say that again. Stop giving your loyalty to leeches. Because sometimes those are the ones that, you know, you want them to love. Those are the ones who want to love you. And God said, stop giving your loyalty to leeches. Give it to the people who appreciate you. The ones that appreciate your time. The, the ones that appreciate your words. They appreciate your counsel. They love you for real. That's those are the people who you need to ride for. You know, I told one of my friends, I don't know if he's still watching. He's a little bit shy. I think he's still watching me. Um, but I, I'm not going to shout you out, brother. I'm not going to shout your name out. But, you know, he's always saying, I honor you so much. And guess what? Those are the people who I spend time with. Those are the people who I give my number to. I don't give my number to everybody. You know, I spend time with them. I talk to them. I'm very casual. I keep conversations with them. You know what? Because they're real. And Gordon, she's also on here. You know, she'd be like, hey, girl. You know why? Because iron sharpens iron. These are people I stick to because they love me. You know, um, uh, uh, there are so many others on, on the broadcasting that are even watching me. Veronica Hollingsworth. You know, you give me your time. You come in my broadcasting, and it's your time. You, uh, Kimberly, Chrissy Lynn, you give me your time, and I respect that. Because guess what? You can be doing something else. You know, time is money. You can be hustling with your time. You can be doing so many other things with your time. But you choose to listen to me. Those are the individuals. Anytime they inbox me, yep, I'm here. Yes, do you need me? Yeah, sure. You, uh, uh, what do you need? Uh, you need money? You need gifts? You need gifts? I look out for those who ride for me. And sometimes you need, you need to look out for your riders. Not those people who just come in your broadcast and come and take and gone. No. People who sow into your life, give you their time, they love you, they give you words of affirmation, they honor you. Those are the ones who you need to ride for. And some people need to learn the lesson. Stop, stop trying to play those people who are riding for you. The ones that check up on you, the ones that love you for real, the ones that honors you, give to you, support you, that care about you, pray for you. After every broadcasting, this woman of God, Eno, she, she calls me, Rebecca Telebra, Leba. After every broadcasting, I promise she never miss a beat. I come on the broadcast and she knows I deal with a lot of backlash from retaliation. Every faithfully. Before I start my broadcasting, woman of God, I bless you. Woman of God, these are people who are faithful. You, will, you need to learn how to reward loyalty with loyalty and reward distance with distance. And people are distancing themselves from you. They don't want you in their life. They're blatantly telling you they don't love you, they don't care, and they don't want you in your life. And you have to respect your space and give them your space. Not that you don't love them, but guess what? If they are showing you that they don't want you in their life, let them go. You can't force yourself on somebody. If you have to force love, if you have to force connection, if you have to force loyalty, if you have to force people to communicate with you, if you have to force people amen, to talk to you, that's not love. Because that's something you willingly do. If you have to pull teeth, like, listen, you know, if you sound like some kind of orthodontist or something, I'm pulling teeth, giving you an extracting, oh, do you love me? Do you care? Uh, do, do, can you call me? Can you communicate with me? Can you get, that's not fair. If you are giving everything to someone and they're not doing it for you, how is that fair? How is that even love? I'm not saying they may not care about you, but how is that, how is that love? Love is not what it says. Love is what it does. Okay? Love is not what it says. Love is what it does. Don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. Show me in your giving. Show me in your time. Show me your sacrifice. You know, show me that every time. Hey, how about some days that you call me? I'm always calling you. How about you call me? Hey, Prophetess, are you okay? Hey, Prophetess, you know, I just want to let you know I was thinking about you. Oh, Prophetess, I want to let you know that I'm just praying for you. You know, you're in my thoughts and prayers. And guess what? Everybody wants somebody loyal in their life. Oh, you know, I want real loyal people in my life. I want people that care about me. I want real people in my life. And guess what? The moment somebody, God sent somebody real in your life, now you don't know how to handle it. So God had to show you maybe you're the one that's not real. Oh, you know, I need somebody real in my life. I need people that's loyal in my life. I need some people that, you know, that's going to ride for me, roll with me. And then, some, then God sent somebody, sent somebody who is loyal, that is rocking with you, that is loyal to you, that does care about you, that prays for you, that loves you. Guess what? You look at them as a nuisance. You toss them to the side. 
You know why? Because the person makes themselves available. So whenever you make yourself available, you don't appreciate. Oh, uh, they'll always be there. Uh, so you, they'll always be there. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Stop letting people treat you like, treat you like sloppy seconds. That's, that's not fair. That's not fair. So sometimes you can love these people, but you have to also protect your heart. So listen, that was my message for tonight, guys. I appreciate you guys. I I'm going to make this a part two. I hope this message has really ministered to you. I wanted to talk to somebody. And listen, this is my way of venting. You know, because uh, I, I also had to, if I can have a moment of transparency, I had to vent. You know, something, I, I experienced something today and it really, it really, it really pushed me to the Baja. It did. You know, boy, did I want to, I wanted to be the Hema, the, the, the Hema in the past today. I wanted to be so bad. I promise you. I wanted to just go. I told my friend. I said to my friend, boy, I want to go Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Compton, and Chicago, South, South Central, South Style on this person so bad. I wanted to do it so bad. I wanted to go straight Compton, Bronx, uh, uh, all of that. Chicago, Brooklyn, Queens, the gutter. I want to get gutter. I'm going to get dirty with it. And, and, and the Lord says, you best to not. And my friend's like, you better not. Because you know what? I have integrity. And God's remind you something. God remind you who you are. And I said, you know what? I'm better than that. Lord, I forgive them. Lord. And I said, you know what? Let me just go on Facebook Live and talk about this because I know it's a good relief. It's a, a breath of fresh air. And I know that people can relate to this. You know, because I'm telling you, and I'm going to say this in closing, people with big hearts, we do too much. And my best friend said to me one day, he said to me, he said, if people didn't ask for your help, stop giving help. If people didn't ask for your prayer, stop asking for prayer. If people are not communicating with your, stop doing, just stop, stop being so overly giving. And I'm like, I don't know how to do it. There's no shaded areas for me. There's no gray areas. I don't know how to be, I, I only know how to be white or black. I don't, Eno said it to me, I don't know how to be gray because I'm real. I just don't know how to do it. I don't know, I don't know how to be fake. It's just not in me. I don't know how to put, I, just, I don't know. So I keep accountability partners to, to help me to focus and to balance. But guys, in closing, I just want to say, guard your heart. Love people, but guard your heart. So that way, in helping individuals and helping them to pick up their broken pieces, you don't cut yourself in the process. Well, guys, that is my time. Amen. My information is up there. I'm not going to belay you the point. I know you guys have been giving so much. Um, you guys have joined me last night. Some of you have been giving, giving, giving. So I, I'm not going to put any pressure. But if this message has blessed you today, you are more than welcome to say, you know, oh my God, I just want to drop a, a seed in the ground just for this word because it, it's blessed me. Okay, so again, I won't force anybody, no compulsory. But if it has blessed you, then you can um, show forth your honor and, and also be able to give tonight. So I pray for those who are broken tonight. Maybe, that's right, my friend says love, but don't be a fool. Maybe somebody has broken your heart. Maybe you've, um, you know, maybe you have been giving and maybe you have been pouring out and doing all of the above. I pray for your healing today. I pray for your restoration. I pray that you will learn to love again, that you will learn to trust again, that God will give you a new beginning and that you won't have to live with the trauma from your past. Live in the now moment. Don't allow your past to paralyze, pause your present or your promise or your prophecy. Guys, that is my time. I love you. Jesus Christ loves you. I'll see you back on here next week, Thursday. I made you a quick, spontaneous pop-up teaching. Uh, okay? So God bless you. I love you. Jesus Christ loves you. Live in the expectancy of God. Shalom.